Deadpool 2 is directed by David Leitch. Leitch? 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 I don't fucking know. A great stunt coordinator that directed last year's underwhelming Atomic Blonde. It felt like it was trying too hard to be James Bond meets John Wick, another film he had worked on, and had a story that almost put me to sleep. I'm not a Marvel fan, and the director hasn't interested me aside from a handful of his fight scenes, but I went to see Deadpool 2 anyway because I enjoyed the first one. If you're a fan of the universe, if you follow the characters, if you read the comics, if you liked the first film, you'll most certainly like this one too. I prefer indie films. These movies just aren't my cup of tea. If you want to hear a fellow fan gush about a film you already know you'll like, this probably isn't the review for you. Of the several Marvel films that I've seen, I really only liked Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and the first Deadpool. They were the only ones that I felt put a spin on the copy and paste superhero formula. I went into the film today expecting more of the same, more violence, more jokes, and more CGI. And that's what I got. Did I like it as much as the first film? No, of course not. If you're one Wondering, I'd probably give the first one a seven and a half. There isn't much new or unique that can be brought to a film like this, but that doesn't mean that I didn't enjoy it. My major problem with Marvel movies is that they all have the same narrative structure. The movie opens with a large action set piece to grab your attention. You meet or are reintroduced to the characters, you learn who the villain is, and then the rest of the movie is just a journey filled with explosions where the heroes learn about themselves, face struggles, and finally defeat the bad guy. You've seen most of the movies before you've actually even watched them. Sure, there are reveals and twists and easter eggs to keep the diehard fans coming back, but the average moviegoer just wants the mindless action and a few laughs. I liked Guardians and Deadpool because they felt a bit different. Don't get me wrong, they followed the exact same story structure as all the other films, but Guardians incorporated a fun soundtrack and the theme of family, two aspects many Marvel films that followed stole from. Deadpool added an R-rated edginess with graphic violence and adult jokes. Deadpool 2 does what Guardians Volume 2 did. It becomes a caricature of the first. But since Deadpool 1 was already a fourth wall breaking, self-aware movie, it works better here. The jokes hit about as well as the first time around. Myself and the rest of the audience were laughing pretty regularly. The fight scenes were directed as well as I'd expect from David Leitch and were entertaining for the most part. Ryan Reynolds is perfect as Deadpool. Josh Brolin and Zazie Beetz were great additions as Cable and Domino. The first X-Force scene was probably the most entertaining scene in the movie for me personally, their debut as a team after a series of casual job interviews. Most characters from the first film are back and the interactions between them showcase the same strong chemistry that you remember. At times the film is purposefully derivative, copying scenes from the first film and not handling it as well as say 22 Jump Street did. It feels as though it is done to be reference humor, a nod to the fans that like certain scenes in the first film. There are many self-aware references and the movie pokes fun at itself and the actors that star in it. The satire is almost always welcome. Where I found the ironic humor to miss its mark was with the abundance of awful, ill-fitting song choices. It was clear the songs were chosen specifically for how tone-killing and corny they were, but a few would have been enough to get the point across. Instead, the whole movie is song after song of obnoxious tunes, continuing far after the joke has gone stale. Aside from the music, I had two large issues with the film. One involves a major plot line that begins within the first five minutes and continues throughout. I don't want to ruin anything, but I will say that the entire plotline is filled with eye-rolling levels of melodrama. The kind of melodrama you'd expect Deadpool to make a joke about, but he never does. It felt out of character, which made it feel like bad writing. Speaking of bad writing, that's my other complaint. The movie has a decent amount of lazy writing, both with its story and its dialogue. There are two parts in the movie where Deadpool looks at the audience and admits the writing is bad, but this just makes the issue more confusing. By admitting some of the bad writing is bad, and not acknowledging the rest of it, it feels like you didn't realize certain lines and plot devices were as lazy as the ones you mentioned. And they were. If you were to make a point to tell the audience every single time there was an instance of lazy writing, it would get repetitive and you'd have a whole new issue on your hands. And if that's the case, why not just write it better? Despite the music, melodrama, and a few writing choices, I had fun with Deadpool 2, just as I had expected. I suppose I could have just done a copy and paste of my Super Troopers 2 review for this film and it would have gotten the same point across just fine. Did you like Super Troopers 1? Well, you'll probably like Super Troopers 2. If you liked the first Deadpool, you'll like this Deadpool. Six and a half out of ten.